Good morning. morning. It's good to see those who are here today. uh, Here, Uh, I uh, I was really surprised this morning. I stayed overnight. I'm Pastor Dave Fredham, and if Faith still claims me, I'm her dad, uh, Faith Swenson's dad. So um, it's good to be with you here today, and looking forward to participating. I've been here for other things, you know, and and it's good to be here for this reason too, and share and celebrate with you today. Um, I don't know if there's any announcements that need to be made, mentioned otherwise. Um, I think Jacob will be able to get out pretty quick here this week and and, uh, and with the COVID stuff and and so we'll, it'll be good. And if I understand right, there's voters meeting next week and Talk to your chair a little bit, and he wants he's wants to move things along, you know. So uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, so anything else needs to be mentioned? Okay, then let's begin our worship with our opening hymn, three ninety four.
Let's rise. We take time for confession and reassurance of God's forgiveness in the words of the absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask you to read responsibly with me uh, Psalm 67 as we have it in our uh, bulletin here today. I ask you to take the even verses. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus. 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For our lessons today, we start out with Exodus chapter 33, beginning with the 12th verse. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I, shall, that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, 
just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also invited, was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated, and we will sing hymn number 402.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. When I look at, when just reading these lessons this morning uh, has, just causes me to stop and, and think. Uh, the Exodus lesson for today you can't help but think about our own country compared to Israel and what's going on and how important it is we need God's help and guidance, especially at this time, doesn't it? It really causes us to stop and think. And then also being a husband, uh, that Ephesians lesson uh, kind of is a very good reminder for me. You know, it's... Uh, uh, it's good for me to be saying this, uh, knowing that my daughter is probably uh, seeing this right now uh, on whatever means they're looking at it. Um, to, to have that, and I need that. Uh, I, I remember uh, back in my seminary days, the fieldwork pastor that I had uh, well, his, his wife's parents lived in the same town he was pastor. And so he, he said, notice that the Bible says, a man shall leave his father and mother. doesn't say anything about the wife. And, uh, and he was having to say that. But certainly there are other things that, that really lend themselves here. Uh, there's kind of an old story that kind of that does a good job of helping me to, to get going and thinking, putting things into perspective here. And that is, uh, it has to do with, the, there was a couple celebrating their 50th anniversary and they had all the friends and relatives there and the husband thought, oh, it's good to say something here. And he turned to his wife and he said, my dear, we've been, Married all these years, and after 50 years, I found you to be tried and true. And everybody smiled and stuff, but she was kind of hard of hearing. And uh, she said, what? And, he, and she said, he said, my dear, after 50 years, I found you to be tried and true. And he said it real loud, trying to make sure she heard it and understood. And she said, well, after 50 years, I'm tired of you, too. Some days, huh? Uh, you know, uh, my wife keeps re saying to me, you really should get your hearing checked. And it's getting worse every year. And uh, we know about that, too. We can be kind of hard of with selective hearing and listening uh, is very real. The Lord needs to give us some reminders, doesn't he? About what really is important. So we get to Ephesians chapter 5 and, and we hear those words. Submit as to the Lord. Love just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We need those reminders. Goes on to say, this mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and his church, and we sure need to hear that. We need to be reminded of Christ going, coming into this world, to be a human being, to live that perfect life that we could not live. And then also, to be that perfect once for all sacrifice for us on that cross, taking all our sin and taking all our brokenness onto himself on that cross and to be risen and alive here for us. And then maybe we are ready to hear those words. Submit 
give. We need to hear that. Submit as to the Lord. Love, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Marriage is very revealing. It reveals a lot to us about the grace and life and love that God has for us, the need for, for forgiveness and that unconditional love that totally, completely comes from our Savior. Marriage is about showing the rest of the world that this is what it's about. And it's so important for us. Ephesians 5.21 uh, kind of sets the stage for this. He said, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. He's talking to everybody at that point. So it keeps us, it all into perspective. And then he shows how that works out. It shows in your marriage. It shows in your relationship with the kids. It shows in how master and servant relates. It shows in all our life. And it's important that we understand these things. We are the bride of Christ, the church. We have a relationship with our bridegroom, Jesus. Does the church tell Jesus how to do his job? Well, no. We might try it. Maybe in our prayers we say, Lord, you got to do this this way. And think it at times. Maybe decide that we know better than God himself. And that certainly is a temptation. To think we could do a better job. But who does the submitting? It really should be us, shouldn't it? Out of reverence for Christ and all he's done. God speaks. And we need to listen. And we need to respond. And so then the husband is called. We are to embody Christ in all that he says and does. He says, those who, who hear you, hear me. So it's important for us to be sharing Christ, isn't it? To be living in him, to be an example of all he is and what he's done for us. And we often forget that. We forget these things about submitting and living as Christ would want us to. And that's why it's so important that we hear these words. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and gave himself for us and died for us. He shed his blood so that we might have the forgiveness, have his righteousness, and have life in him. He did all this for us unconditionally, selflessly, sacrificially. He gave himself on that cross for us that we might have real life with God to hold on to and trust in him. We, we get all kinds of advice about marriage and, and, uh, and, you know, never go to bed angry, compromise on the little things, take turns going to the in-laws for the holidays, you know, we can go on and on about, about those advice that maybe we got uh, when we were younger. Back when I was before I got married, I, I grew up around excavating. And uh, you can imagine the kind of advice that I would get out on the tile crew. Uh, but some of that I can't repeat in a pulpit. But it was advice for marriage. People giving me a hard time about doing it. And go on and on. 
but at the heart of the Christian marriage, what really keeps it is Christ and his life and love for us. He is the head. He is the head of all our life together. No matter how it works out, in family and being with the neighbors. It's in him that we really learn to forgive and love and cherish and honor and care for one another. And then to share that life and love with that world around us. We do this because of him. We have to. We can't do it ourselves. We need the power and presence of his spirit at work in our hearts and lives, guiding us and directing us and helping us. And so now the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's rise and confess our faith in our Lord using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you have manifested your glory in the sign given at Cana. You have restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood and now give us your grace and abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your church, your truth in the person of your Son, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, you have gathered your church and sanctified us in your truth. Guide and direct uh, Matthew, our synod president, Brian, our district president, and Bert, our circuit visitor. Preserve all vacant congregations and send laborers in to your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, you blessed the wedding at Cana with your presence and honored it with your first miracle. Strengthen and give your gladness to all married couples and their families. Be present in our homes and lives with your free and abundant forgiveness and preserve us in the true faith from each generation to the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, preserve in wisdom our nation and our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, elect. Kamala, our vice president, elect. Kim, our governor, and all public servants, including our armed forces, police, and first responders. Send peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, you are the great physician of body and soul. Give rest, healing, and relief to all who are sick or in any need, especially those that we would now like to name in our hearts in this moment of silence.
be with all expectant mothers and their children. Invite them and us to cast all anxiety on you and so live in the certainty of your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your grace you, may, you have instituted holy matrimony in which you keep us from unchastity and other offenses. We beseech you to send your blessing upon every husband and wife that they may not provoke each other to anger and strife, but live peaceably together in love and godliness. Receive your gracious help in all temptations and rear their children in accordance with your will. Grant us all to walk before you in purity and holiness, to put all your, our trust in you and to lead such lives on earth that in the world to come we may have everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated and we'll sing our closing Yeah.